20 left in the first quarter. I think in a series like this, you also have to find a way to get some cheap baskets since execution is key. Big shot, Thomas. Great shot, Thomas, despite excellent defense by Jordan. Jordan had a moment where he fell out with Isaiah Thomas. And the backstory to all this is it led to him telling them, do not bring Isaiah Thomas on the dream team. And take a look at what the response was from Isaiah about what's going on in the documentary and the dream team issue. Whatever Isaiah says now, you know, it wasn't his true actions then. You know there's time enough to think about it or the reaction of the public that's changed his perspective. You can show me anything you want. There's no way you can convince me he wasn't a blank. Had we had the opportunity to do it all over again, I think all of us would make a different decision. Now, me, myself, personally, I paid a heavy price for that decision. And that decision, heavy price he's talking about, he missed out on being the dream team. They took John Stockton and Magic Johnson over him and had Joe Dumars for crying out loud as the backup over Isaiah Thomas. T Stream, did Michael Jordan go too far or is this just a case of the rich and powerful get all the spoils? You know, you can't take anything away from Jordan. He was good, all right? He left his mark on basketball for as long as basketball will remain being played in the United States of America. But what he did was, excuse my language, but what he did was a fuckboy move. Ladies and gentlemen, keep in mind, T-Streams, keep in mind, T-Streams is a Detroit guy. I just want to put that out there. I just, some people. I, I just want to put that out there now. T-Streams is a Detroit guy. Right, Ooh, right. Those are fighting words for some people. Now, I'm going to tell you this because <laughs> when you look at it it, it, it boils all the way back to the championship game where they swept us, all right? Detroit leaves, Detroit leaves the auditorium. Don't shake the hand. So, I mean, all right, you at the highest level of competition. If somebody don't want to shake your hand, man, why are you going to cry? You don't want to shake my hand. So he can't play basketball with us overseas. And I'm just, and I mean, it may have not have been like that verbatim, but when you look at it, that's how it was. God. Michael Jordan played the fuck boy because didn't nobody want to shake his hand at the end of the finals. You already got the trophy, MVP, and all this other kind of stuff. Why do you need to shake somebody's hand? Nigga, we mad. We, you know, <laughs> so, so, so how you gonna try to use your way? You gonna try to use your way to to pull guard somebody off of a team? And at that time, you know, you you really wasn't you really wasn't even at the the total height of your little situation either. And so you know, that was if you if you finish if you go back and watch the documentary. Uh, or, or the statement, at least, that Isaiah Thomas said, you know, it'll, it'll really shed some light. You know, he would, dude was really being, you know, and for him to drag it on, it's been over 20, 25 years now. It's been longer than that. And so for him to, to drag that on and still hold the grudge because he didn't want to shake your hand, Michael Jordan, you is a butt boy. <laughs> Larry, let me give it to you before they kick us off over T Street. Oh, <laughs> is is Michael Jordan being as petty as 50 Cent and Donald Trump? And is it justified for him to be yeah. this petty to this day? To this day. All right. Well, let me let me say this. 
here's here's the thing. It's sort of a catch twenty two, right? Part of mm -hmm. me feels like, as far as taking him, as far as taking Isaiah Thomas and putting him on the dream team, and going to the Olympics, the Olympic Games itself is a is a a sporting event, a larger sporting event, or you know, a tournament that is based on the foundations of good sportsmanship. It was sort of a way that nations can come together and they can avoid war by having sport. And that's, I mean, those were sort of the original foundations of the Olympic Games. Now, if you're worried that somebody is not a good sportsman and you don't want them on, the, on your team because they're not a good sportsman and they don't exhibit good sportsmanship, that is, that is a legitimate reason not to want somebody. However, huh? however, if you are also not showing good sportsmanship by not actually forgiving somebody or saying, hey, this is a good player, let's reach out to them, let's be good sports about it and try to hash out our differences, it's also not being the best sport. So it's sort of a catch-22, but in the, in the end, the reality of it was is that Jordan was the man at the time. He was the one that got to call the shots because he could have just simply said, it's either Isaiah or me. And they would have said, okay, cool, we're taking you and, and leaving Isaiah home. And I don't know if that's what happened, but if it if it came to that, I'm sure that that's very easily what could have happened. So, I mean, I, I, I think that I think ultimately as a competitor, you should want the very best players on your team, whether you like them or not, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, so the back does not want him, I think is uh, maybe, I mean, at the same time, he really, I'm sure he realized we just don't need him. You know, I yeah. mean, our team is stacked. We just don't need them. And they didn't. They, I mean, they obliterated their competition. They just simply didn't need them. It's like, did Hell, they need Christian Leitner? No, but, you know, they needed a college player. So he was there. The backstory on, on what happened with the Dream Team. Now, this was written by someone who covers the Chicago Bulls. So this could be a whole lot of icing on this Michael Jordan cake. The backstory is it wasn't just that Jordan didn't want him. Most of the people on the team didn't want Isaiah because they felt like he was a bad boy. He would have been a cancer in the locker room, whatever, whatever. But if it came down to Michael Jordan really was holding a grudge over the handshake thing, I give Michael Jordan no credence on that because the year before that incident, when the Pistons got rid of Larry Bird and the crew, Larry Bird and that crew walked off without shaking hands and ain't nobody think of it. So I, I'm kind of I'm kind of with T Streams on that one. If it's that petty, why in the hell didn't Michael Jordan get mad and be like, well, I don't want Larry Bird because he's not a good sportsman either. Right, but here's the thing: when you don't shake the when you don't shake the hand of the bad boys, it's not looked at as you did something horrible because you're dissing the bad boys. But when you're the bad boys and you don't shake the hands of the good guys then people look at you differently, you know? Oh, and oh, so you you own that Michelle Obama. When they go low, we supposed to go high. <laughs> well, I mean, essentially, yeah. But when you don't go high, people Man. look at you a certain kind of way, you know? Man. When we gonna learn our lesson about that? You about to make me say a bad word, Larry. I'm starting from scratch. When we gonna learn our lesson about that? <laughs> well, you start from scratch every every episode now, man. Careful, you know, <laughs> careful. T, T streams finish off finish off segment one for us. By but the way, know, subscribe, when... people, and super chat. I got new sound and visual graphics for those that super chat. I'll let you pick. All right, cool. So, you know, at the end of the day, man. <clears throat> It really just it, it do show how petty Jordan is, and um, for for one, here it is. Everybody now they're on the they're on the on the higher side of their their fifties, crawling you know crawling into their sixties, and you still talking about something that that happened at the end of eighty at the end of the eighties and the start of the nineties. But how many times can can you think of when? when Jordan expressed or showed unsportsmanlike conduct on the basketball court with, you know, mm -hmm. you know with, with his mouth, you know, mm -hmm. and, and everything. And so, uh, and the way he, the way he uh, reportedly treated some of his, uh, his own teammates. So he punched Steve Kerr in the nose and broke it. Yeah. So, you know, it was a, you know, it was, it was, it was a double, you know, it was a, he playing the, the double standard, you know. So you know, I, yeah. I really, 
I like him as as a ball player, but you know, dude, he, you know, as you know, probably as a as a person, we probably wouldn't click. You know, I don't know, cause uh, dude, he, he all right. But anyway, I mean, it's, it's hard. Favorite. I would imagine it's hard because when you get to that, when you get to that level you have a humongous ego because everyone's saying you're the greatest, you're the greatest there ever was, you're the greatest player in the game. And you're actually backing all that up. It's not like there's just some, it's not like it's hype. It actually is. And it probably, you know, it goes to your head after a while and it starts to change how you behave, you know? And, and, and when everybody's sitting there going along with it, I mean, you could just say, I don't want somebody on this team or I'm angry at somebody and other people will get mad. Okay, well, he's angry at him. It must be a legitimate reason for him. I'm okay with that, you know? But to be honest with you, anybody who's still mad about something that happened on a basketball court 20 years ago, that, that shit's just petty. Leave it be. I mean, I understand in the moment, in the league, while you're still playing, but 20 years later, I mean, they should be friends at this point. They should be sitting around drinking friggin' 40 year old scotch and talking about the good old days you know should be should be oh, but yeah. you know male ego can be a thing ja rule and 50 cent ain't cool i don't <laughs> ever see um hillary and bill clinton being cool with donald trump and it don't ever look like this mess with isaiah thomas and michael but you jordan know, like it's you know Lamar, like bizarre. you were saying that a lot of the other players didn't want him on the team i think that yep. i think that he probably, I mean, obviously they were the bad boys. They played hard. They fouled hard. They played hard. They played dirty. But the thing is, is that when that's how they played with their, against other teams, he's not going to be that way to his own teammates because that's what, that's how they played with their competition, you know? So, well, here's the, here's the point Stephen Gray made that's legit. Um, Isaiah Thomas kept Michael Jordan out of the All-Star game his rookie year. And that's kind of another point where the beef began between the two. Why do you, how do you keep him out of the All-Star game? I guess he went and told the coaches, don't let this little young whippersnapper get in the All-Star game. We're not going to have him. So Michael Jordan's rookie year, he didn't make the All-Star game. And the allegation is that Isaiah Thomas was the big tree leader for that. When did they start the when did they start the wow. uh, rising stars or the the uh the 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 rookie all-star game? Man, that's been since the 2000s era. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, crazy. I didn't realize that that Isaiah did that's a straight bitch move right there. If that's what happened. Amen. I mean, I see, No, I'm just saying, I mean, if you're a rookie and you're coming in and you're going to make the all-star game as a rookie and some dude just is 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 upset with you for whatever reason and decides to to to, to straight like, basically just cock block you from getting on the all star team. I I would I think I might have some lingering resentment over that too. I might be like, man, f him, you know? Yeah, but like you said, at at this point, man, just let it go, man. All y'all almost retirement age. Hell, some of y'all walking around with a cane now. Just let it go. No, no, man. I agree. At this point, they should be okay. When I guess what I mean, lingering you know resentment when it came time to keep him off of a team like keeping him off of the off the the dream team then i might be like okay yeah you know guess what i'm cool i just got a gold medal and you didn't you got you you know i still went i still eventually went on to become an all-star and i still have you know multiple vip you know vip trophies and and, and all-star appearances and i have a gold medal and you didn't get to be on that dream team because you basically played the bitch move on my on my on my rookie year. So, I mean, I can I can see why that stuff kind of goes back and forth, you know. But, you know, like we were saying, at this point, they should be sitting around, you know, watching old films together, drinking scotch, and and just hanging out, chilling, and, and talking about how they were dumb young kids, and and you know, because it wasn't like even then, even even though Isaiah was a so called vet. Dude retired at 32. He wasn't that old. 